He's pillow. being a real contrarian. Yeah, Sam is really yeah. like... And like, when you sleep in a chair, it's like a uh, nap. It's like one of the high wake up. All right. All right. And Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. What's, What's up, man? Up, thanks so much for doing it, For sure, guys. For sure, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, so thanks for having me. It's great. We, we yeah. talked about you on the show. We showed your Instagram and yeah. stuff like, in the AD. Oh, I wasn't going to take a L on that. I had to post something next day. Get the, yeah, oh, yeah. You got to get it. You got to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a move, man. Get some But that was a foul. He just slapped you. Yeah. I was watching that in the green room on the road. I was just like, I watched on my phone on the MSG Go app, and I was just like, dude, he just hit Von Baker in the face. <laughs> yeah. That's not, that's, you don't do that. Good for you, though, dude. I, I think in college I led the country in like face shots. <laughs> <laughs> Flagrant one. Still killer either. Yeah. Boys, can we have you sit down in the chair? Let's do it. You and Sam will awesome. chat for a little bit, then we'll do a little panel segment. Sweet. You didn't tell me there was a crowd. No one's gonna laugh. <laughs> um, this is the biggest crowd we've had since the dude from Stranger oh, no. Things. It's a sellout. I think, <laughs> I think this is actually bigger than the Caleb McLaughlin crowd. So, what's your road routine? You're on the road a lot. You're, I'm, I'm guessing you're watching mm -hmm. a lot of Netflix. It depends on the city you go to, as you can imagine. You get to Milwaukee, obviously. Yeah, you're definitely gonna <laughs> watch Netflix. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I actually don't. I've been to yeah. Milwaukee a few times. Yeah. Uh, not terrible. Like. Portland, it's like vampire weather, so it's like I know. you definitely don't want to leave the And the room. people are so fragile in Portland. Yeah. Which gets you more girls on the road, the sling or the hair? Mm. I'd say it's a close tie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the broken face earlier in the year did me, did me well. Davis and the foul. Baker got hurt. He may have taken an elbow to the head. That was like the biggest Instagram, Twitter post I've ever had, so I was pretty proud of that. So Anthony Davis slapped you out of the way. Ah, it was more of like a haymaker el elbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That you was... ever seen a human helicopter? That was me. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So he just haymakers you, dunks it. You get, so that's like, you get ahead of ESPN. You know you're going to be on the top oh, 10. It, yeah. I think it was number two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should have been number one. It should have been. Yeah. But it's okay because he's like going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And the guy actually signed the jersey I was wearing, so it's my jersey. It's got blood on it. <laughs> the ball boy takes it to him when they came to our place, and he signs it for me. Yeah. And, it, and it, you know, ironically, he says, stay healthy, bro. <laughs> like, uh, I'm trying, AD. I'm trying. <laughs> when you first came to the Knicks, the first thing I noticed about you is you're a defender. Mm -hmm. you, you're like an old school player, kind of. You know, you, you run through picks, you know, right. you cut to the basket. You know, you get a lot of like, you, you play like the way I would expect a four-year college player to play. Yeah, like little things. Little things. You were undrafted. Mm -hmm. Was there a point when you're like, I did four years in college, I'm undrafted. Was there a point where you're like, this is not gonna happen? I think when I first got to the Knicks, I wasn't on a guaranteed deal, so that gave me little nerves on the side. Uh, but once I played like those first like three games, I think at MSG, just like you said, just doing the little things, playing defense, being a hustle guy, and I got a lot of confidence those first three games playing with you know D Rose, Mello, and seeing myself out there each night just kept building that confidence, and then I started to realize that I you know, had a future. Teams that win need guys like you. Mm -hmm. They need a guy who's willing to put their body on the line, who's willing to take a charge, who's willing to like you know run through picks and stuff. So yeah, we we responded to that. That's a sign. If we lose, it's one thing, but if we lose from lack of effort, that's, that's what we... That's, yeah. We don't need that. No. Definitely don't need that. So... Effort you, and attitude. Two yeah. things you can always control. Who on the team, like, really encouraged you the most when you, when you were new? Uh, probably Courtney Lee and Lance Thomas. Two guys who are known for their defense. Yes, vets. Yeah. And anything that stuck with you that they said? Probably just me guarding them in practice after games. My energy was always the same, and they didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> My nickname was Burgundy, and they always be like, Burgundy, can you calm it down a little bit, man? As in Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy, Anchorman. yeah, you know, with a mustache. <laughs> Say they remake Wedding Crashers, your Owen Wilson. Ooh. Who, who is Vince Vaughn? That's tough. Maybe, maybe Lance. Lance? Lance? I yeah. like it. I, uh, I grew up playing a lot of pool, eight ball pool. And, really? Uh, in a town of like 300 people, so not a whole lot to do besides go to the pool hall and play pool and video games. And <laughs> Lance, Lance would be, um, like you said, the wedding crasher partner of mine. We went to San Fran and it, we got there on a Sunday and we went around town, got dinner and took him to an eight ball, eight ball pool bar and I, I beat, his, beat his butt. You know? <laughs> like, like, you know, this skinny, blonde, white-haired kid 
He can't play pool. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also, that's, you're unassuming, but Paul Newman and The Hustler. They didn't see it coming. No, they didn't. Classic. You ever see that movie? Classic. It's been a while. I wouldn't expect you're a pool, pool shark. Yeah. Oh, I didn't say shark. <laughs> <laughs> I just said I'll beat you in pool. You're from a town of 300. You're from Kansas. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest difference, Kansas to New York? Like, what has it taken you a while to get accustomed to? So the biggest thing for me is, in Kansas, it's obviously flat. Like, people say, like, it's flat. Like, literally, no, it's flat. Like, you drive down the highway, you're looking as far as your eyes will allow you to see. Yeah. Like, 15 miles. Kyrie Irving should live there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So the difference is, in Kansas, I know where I'm going. I can see the sun, use the sun for directions. When you get to New York, you get off the subway and you're like, you got vertigo a little bit, and you're like, looking around. Do you around ride the subway? Every now and then, I take the one train south. I look That's on my train. Website. Yeah, it's great. Kind of getting a little frustrated because a 2-3 Express is uh, under construction. And uh, I don't like stopping 20 stops to get to Chambers Street to like go to Tribeca, so. <laughs> Uh, What's, is that your area, Tribeca? I live in Upper West Side, but... Me too! I like that. <laughs> no. this go, we should go to Barney Greengrass. Barney Greengrass? Okay. He goes to the games, that guy. Does he? he? Yeah, he's a big fan. I saw him at the game last night, he's a big fan. Okay. Yeah, but like the, the one train is, is my subway, but like I was saying, you get off the train and if you don't know, if you're not from here, you could be very confused about streets run this direction, avenues run this direction. So I'm like looking around, there's like all these buildings and this, I can't find the sun. So I'm like, I'm like looking around like, what direction is north? I don't know. Like, and then I start realizing like, oh, downtown, that's got to be south, right? And so I like start figuring stuff out. Once you figure out the train system, like I feel like you pretty much figure out like everything you need to know about New York. You meet Definitely. a lot of characters down there, so. I've never heard a New Yorker say which way is north. <laughs> no, literally, like, yeah. I'd be like, hey, uh, hey, O'Quinn, are we, you know, you want to wanna go to Westchester, head north? He goes, Ron, listen, don't talk directions with me. <laughs> I'm from Queens, like, just, just say right, left, up, down, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so that's probably the biggest adjustment is, like, not knowing your whereabouts. Yeah. And, like, you start using, like, buildings for, like, directions and starting to get a little better. Yeah. So is, are you tight with O'Quinn as well? Yeah, we, we, we got a pretty good... Handshake. We got a neat handshake too. Do you? Yeah. Do you, I, I haven't seen that one. We got to get footage of that. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's like a hey. high five. So it's like high five, and then he does like a little like ballerina spin. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, that's fine. The but, chair is in the way. Yeah. And then you just go like that, and then you never say a word to him the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs>